show, everybody. This is Crucible Radio. If you are tuning in to hear our, our good old friend, our good old bud since way back in the day, Typro from way back when, the one and only Dr. Lupo, uh, that's going to be coming up in the second half of the show. Uh, we, we normally spend a little time up front talking about this game we like so much, Destiny, in particular the, the PvP part where you, you go on the internet and you... you you fight other people. Might be familiar <laughs> with it. It's kind of magic, like that that exists. But yeah, yeah. You, you know, as I've gotten older, I've found that you know it's fun to play the play the PVE games and the single player games, but nothing can really hold my attention like like killing someone in the Crucible and knowing that somebody else just like saw the red screen and they're like, "Oh man, that guy just got me!" And I go, "Yes, yes, I got you." <laughs> this is. Keeping me entertained. I don't know. Let's dive right in. Uh, we've been playing a lot of Destiny because Destiny's pretty fun. What have you guys been up to this week? Uh, I have played uh, a lot of Gambit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, you like that Gambit? To put it very uh, mildly, I've played quite a bit of Gambit. It's mostly because I really... Like, I didn't know how powerful the draw would be to get the title of Dragon, but it it's so it's so close. I can I could see the light at the end of the tunnel, and it helps that Gambit's really fun fun to me. So um I am working towards resetting my rank 1.5 more times. <laughs> um I'm about halfway there, because the I think the ghost is what comes from your rank three uh, package, and I need that to get the title. So uh, I oh, I did half of a rank in one night uh, this week. Whoo! Well, you must have gotten a couple interesting drops along the way. Um, unfortunately, it is not that profitable to do that much gambit. <laughs> we got hey you got you got uh, you got the the malfeasance right i did get malfeasance that's that's Tell me about it uh i got the seething heart like uh when the last curse week was around it's about three when this comes out it'll be three weeks ago um and it took me a minute to like kind of just work through the quest i wasn't trying actively to finish part of it um but i got my malfeasance this week and it's great for the raid. I can say that much. Um, everything in there is taken and, uh, the malfeasance works really well on taken because of the perk. Uh, but otherwise I just, I just wish the exotic perk did a little bit more. Um, Mm. it like when you shoot at something, it builds up the bullets on the person and then explodes into like, uh, kind of like a cluster bomby type effect. Uh, when you stack five. Um, and that's really hard to do when you're playing yeah, against another person. If you're person. shooting somebody five times, I mean, they should, should be dead. have it at that point, right? <laughs> um, the, I would say that the benefits from it in PvP would be like really, really far away. And you're like just really ticky tackying at someone, like just like hoping to get the five or like shooting into a group. Um, but I really don't like, I wouldn't want to use that slot for malfeasance when I could use it for ace of spades. Yeah. Um, maybe a fix comes along and makes it a little bit more viable than ace of spades or brings it in line with ace of spades, uh, or even maybe a cattle, like the malfeasance cat catalyst eventually will give you something that's like, ooh, that's nice and shiny. Let me use that all the time. Um, Mm -hmm. But I can't justify using it currently. Uh, It looks really good on my shelf. It's beautiful. Um, It's pretty. And it was like, as far as getting it, it was nice to be like, yeah, I have the malfeasance. And like I said, taking in the raid is really fun. So that, and, you know, I was looking for... Part of the title is you have to get like all of the collectibles. So all of the weapons, all of the armor, the ship, the ghost, the shaders, the uh, sparrow. And 
I just got all of the weapons and I am still looking for a really good bygones. Yeah, I I had another bygones drop and I'm still I'm not I'm not crazy about the role. I've got rangefinder and slide shot on mine and it's, you know, it's it's fine. There's a curated type one that you can get from uh the drifter when you reach a certain number of uh ranks. That's true. That's true. And I'll that one's that I one. think it has full auto. Don't quote me on that. Full auto and kill clip. Yeah. Um it just kicks really hard. So I don't know how I feel about that role. Yeah. But yeah, lots, oh. lots and lots of gambit. And I am in my mind, I'm trying to like come up with a good way of being like uh, a good guide of some sort to it because there, it, it is my favorite mode currently and it probably will be for a little while. And there's some parts of it that I would love for other players to know, like uh, invasion, you know, when to, when's the best to invade, when's not, uh, when, where, like where people are invading, because that's something I've learned over all these games is like, if I can point my gun towards like where someone just invaded first, I can usually get a drop on like someone with a sleeper, uh, especially with a faster firing, like linear, like crooked fang. Um, there's a lot of times like someone will be like, don't challenge them. But it's like in my head, I know if I am on point and I'm playing really well, I can, I have a better chance to kill that guy with the sleeper because it takes so long to charge. And if I can take them out, then that's great. They don't have the chance at, you know, wiping my team with sleeper. So there's part, there's, there's some rhyme and reason to it. And I've been trying to teach people, in my games, if they, I see them, you know, doing something weird. Doing good work. Doing the good work. Yeah. Bonesy, what about you? What have you been up to? Hey guys, I'm What's Bones. I'm on this episode too. <laughs> yeah. Old, silent, sometimes <laughs> Bonesy, we call him. Uh, I've actually been very tired this week. It's been a stressful one. And I haven't played too much Destiny. But when I've gotten uh, a chance to, I've just been trying to work on my, my Luna's Howl game. Because... I guess I'm going for not forgotten, even though it seems a little daunting at the moment. Uh, but I got to get a lot of kills with Luna's in comp and you know, it's tough. It's a good gun, but it's definitely tough to use. And I've never been, been strong with the one eighties as I've mentioned, but it's fun. It, it has really changed my loadout because well, Ace of Spades was locked in my loadout for my entire comp grind, literally up until I got this gun. And uh, now I'm sniping in my kinetic slot a little bit and just trying to get my sniping down on mouse and keyboard, which is slowly coming along. I actually played a couple games with a controller on my Titan because I was leveling him and I was like, oh, I don't want to like, I have to like get all tense and stuff like that. I just want to kick back and watch YouTube while I do this. And I hit a lot more snipes with a controller, but just like could not do anything else. And it was really funny how just absolutely terrible my controller game is now and uh and how my overall skill i think has gone up since uh becoming fully fluent on on mouse and keyboard i was describing this on discord the other day but like i feel like my destiny skill is like a modern rpg where you've got like three skill trees and you can like put skill points in some of those (laughs) so i have like two more skill points total but they all got shifted around when i went to mouse and keyboard so my my melee game is a little weaker, but my uh, accuracy overall has like skyrocketed and stuff. So just just practicing. I definitely feel I feel good and feel better after that that comp grind and jumping back in there just to get more kills. I'm like, you know, trying to trying to really focus on giving call outs, like just providing information. And I know the the timing of the game, like we got to go back because power is about to spawn even before we get a little purple indicator on my on our screen so i'm feeling better so it feels good to actually have uh, a side effect of the luna's howl besides just getting the gun which is probably improving quite a bit so that's cool well boys i've been busy i think i mentioned last week i I was making a spreadsheet i was gonna make a spreadsheet well let me tell you i made a spreadsheet uh and who says on myself it's a pretty good one Um, But the reasoning behind this and why you should care about the fact that a guy made a spreadsheet 
um, is that I was having a lot of dismantling anxiety, which is like my vault filling up with all this armor. And it's like, well, that, you know, that could be, that could be good. I guess I might, I might want to save that some, and just not knowing like, what am I looking for? What are my options? Um, and there's a lot, there's a lot of great resources. Um, I'm really been enjoying light.gg, um, tells you all the different things that can roll on all the different weapons. But what I really wanted was a big table that says for your helmet, for your legs, for your gauntlet, for your chest, for your class item, what can roll where? There's these like enhanced perks. How do they work? What can they roll on? You know, how do they compare to each other? Is this the best thing I can get on, on this piece of gear? Is there something better out there? And be able to see all of that at a glance so I can kind of look and say, all right, here's the target. Here's what I want. Here's what the, no, I'm going to, I'm dismantling. I've dismantled a lot of stuff. It's been very freeing. So, um, so that's been handy. Uh, the other thing though, is a couple weeks from now, um, we've got the one and only special K dude coming up. Um, if you're not familiar, he is a destiny YouTuber and, uh, active participant in the playbook who really digs in, go listen to his last episode. He's very thorough and very, very thoughtful about um, some of these builds he puts together by really digging in and reading the perks and taking advantage of things that are there. But, you know, people people have a tendency to overlook. Um, and so inspired by that, I wanted to, you know, I'm trying to learn these new subclasses, figure them out. I wanted to just have all of the subclass perk text handy. And like, you guys, you can't, you can't Google it where... Where is it? Like one site will have <laughs> one of them and then another one has all of them on one page, but they just paraphrased it. And then like another site has the version of it that was out before it was released and none of the wikis. It's a mess. And so I made one very large spreadsheet that has every perk for every subclass for every element. And it's a giant grid. Um, it's very helpful. So, Hey, if this sounds useful to you, uh, it's, it's pinned on my Twitter, twitter.com slash famous birds. And Hey, I've also been, uh, playing a lot of Nova warp and, uh, I, we got to get to this interview, but I just have to say, guys, this subclass is very fun. <laughs> I wanted to, we could talk about it a little bit more maybe next week, but, um, I wanted to just share my frustrating to play against. It is. I can only imagine, uh, how frustrating because like people, people don't know to run when it pops. People think they can get you. Yeah. Like they might shotgun you, but you're, you're, zipping, I don't know how you're zapping long around because it lasts forever. Yeah. <laughs> it really lasts a long time. Um, it feels, it feels so good to be styling on people. And I, it is, um, it can be a little inconsistent. It can be a little bit risky. I have blown myself up, but I have, uh, I've really been loving handheld supernova and I wanted to put together a build that sort of worked around that. So kind of brought all those things together. So I've always got my grenade up. I've always got my melee up and I'm getting my super, you know, at least a couple times a game. Um, at least a couple times. I'm getting my super a couple times a game and ideally before anyone else. So there's no chance of getting shut down. Um, and so this build, I've really been liking it. I, uh, I think the two big exotics for the playing Nova Warp are going to be either I have another world, which cuts a flat 30 seconds off of all of your cooldowns. Very handy. Um, but I've been using Nezarax Sin. Uh, and the way it works is if you get a void kill, which could be with your void abilities, could be with a, a void element weapon. Um, it starts abyssal extractors. Basically, it lasts for two seconds. Uh, all of your abilities recharge faster than this time. It, you know, it varies a little bit. It, I don't. It's complicated, but basically, every kill you get is going to take seven seconds off each of your cooldowns. Um, although it stacks in a way, so it's like each spaced out kill. It's a whole thing. Uh, but to keep that uptime up, I've been, um, I was kind of looking for the right loadout and I ended up with a loadout that a week ago I would have laughed if I heard it. Um, I've been using, gotta have a shotgun. So I've been using the primary shotgun, uh, botheration, the blue one out of the collection, which I only started using cause, uh, as I mentioned in this interview, I queued up against someone from BSK who was killing me over and over and over again with it. Uh, this is a blue shotgun. It's aggressive frame. It's uh, pretty consistent. It's easy to get. But the fun thing about it is that it's got auto-loading holster on it. 
So you pick up your ammo, you switch to your uh, your primary weapon, and by the time you've changed back, your shotgun is fully reloaded. This is very, very important when you're picking them up two at a time. Um, and then for that primary, that elemental primary, I was kind of at a loss. I wanted something with some options. I was looking at the gear I'd saved in my vault. Um, guys, inaugural address, the raid pulse is so good. It's got outlaw kill clip on it but more than that it's cute mine is green every time you switch to it it makes this little like kind of noise it's just like my little my little iguana friend who likes to hang out with me and get a lot of kills and uh i i find like i i locked into this loadout last night and it was so much fun i recommend everybody uh if you don't have this class unlocked get it unlocked it is it is just a hoot the thing I got to figure out how to do now is is blink in D2. I, I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But I got to do it. got to do it. So Inaugural address is a Leviathan gun. And, and, and actually, I judge people who use year one weapons. So uh-huh. <laughs> use it at your own <laughs> risk. Yeah. Yeah. Before I roast you on Twitter. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. It's, it's just it's so good. The iguana cares not for your disdain. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to get to this interview. It's a, it's a long one. And let me tell you, Lupo, he came in, he came in hot. He was ready to one. go. He, was, he I was, was ready to go. Man, I've been so exhausted. It's been kind of a shitty week. And I like, it was like Friday. It's like, of course, I'm excited to talk to him. But, you know, work after all week of work, two minutes in, I'm like, I feel great. This is lovely. I love it. It, it just <laughs> lifts me up. And this is such a great conversation and it felt so good and it really pulled me out of a bad mood. So uh, it's really no surprise why he's uh, everyone's favorite. Yeah. Cause we found him and we made him. <laughs> that's why there's no surprise. We had him on the show. Hit, hit us up. We might find you too. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. We're uh, we're a star factory. No here. guarantees. Um, <laughs> Oh, and by the way, before we get to this interview, real quick, just a little plug. Uh, We've mentioned it on this show in the past. We do a little thing with our community in the Crucible Radio uh, community on Discord where we do a diet bet challenge. You lose weight, you bet money. If you lose the weight, you get your money back and you win more. Um, It was awesome the first time we did it. And as a group, uh, lost hundreds of pounds combined together. I felt great afterwards. Swain felt great afterwards. Birds regretted not joining the day well, I said I'll sign t- up. I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. If you were wondering, <laughs> like, I mean, it seems cool, but like, and you know, the support is great. That's real. The energy's there. I'm getting inspired, but like, maybe I'll just see how it works the first time. I'll sit it out. <laughs> uh-huh. I'll like follow along, but like, and then I'll know for sure. Well, rest assured, I have done that, and I can confirm. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm in. I'm in. Let's, All let's right, do Birds this. All right, Birds is thing. in. Last time I personally lost 13 pounds. Hell yeah. Ooh, yeah. So I welcome everyone and anyone to join us on the Discord, discord.gg slash crucible radio. Uh, information will be in the announcements uh, to join this upcoming diet bet. We're, what date is the start date, Bones? Uh, the official start date is October 22nd and it runs for a month. But you can sign up anytime from now until then, and you can actually get in a few days after that date, and you'll have some wiggle room for when you actually need to do your official way in. So don't worry about scheduling. Just try to make your way over to the Discord, and we'll help you out from there. Yeah, super motivating. And a lot of people that really care about helping each other get fit. Yeah, try to lose five pounds. Woo! Yeah. woo woo all right, all right like, let's let's ramp it up. Let's get this <laughs> energy going. Right. Right. Let's crush them and smush them. <laughs> <laughs> I liked when we were hooting. That felt really high energy. <laughs> let's get hooting, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Lupo. Okay, never mind. Here we go. Swain, you, you, you want to call it? Yes, I got break. I'm set with you any I feel our life with the dressing light. You know, outside of this one little segment, we never really talk about the music on this show uh, and how important it is to making this this podcast what it is, that, that it is scored every week by the music that y'all make. I'm amazed. We've gotten so many good submissions. 
in the past three weeks. I, I don't know what happened, but y'all y'all sent me an email that, that changed the direction of my life. So thank you so much. Keep them coming. Send us emails, crucibleradio at gmail.com uh, with your band, but those tracks you just got mastered. We want to hear them. We want to play them. Uh, we're going to get to all of it, but this week is Indian Rope Trick. Go check them out, indianropetrick.bandcamp.com. It's like kind of jazzy kind of 60s little spooky brit pop something it's great go listen to him indian rope trick dot bandcamp dot com Here's the thing. There's nothing to believe in Birds. Birds has got it perfect every single time. No <laughs> issue. Except unless he's intentionally trying to ruin it. Yeah, you're the I best at counting to five. We all know this. You are. I, yeah. It's, it's, it's on your resume, right? I'd heard that. <laughs> I'd heard that it was on your resume. That's actually how you landed this job on, on the podcast, right? It's like, hey, guys, what's up? Yeah, I, do you guys want to make a podcast and I'll just count to five at the beginning? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So he we was like, well, that. all right, we got we Bones that. is funny. Uh, birds can count. I think we're all set. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's essentially need. how you make podcasts. Ta-da! You have one guy and who counts. The secret the other has guy's been just revealed. Funny. Don't tell anybody <laughs> this. This is the formula, gentlemen. I know. I know. It's ruined. It's out there. This is the formula. Okay, Bonesy, do an intro. Uh, Was that the intro? That well, should we're, not be We're the here. Intro. We're in it. But just to make sure everyone knows what's going on, you're in the second half of the episode with our very special guest, you might remember him from uh, his appearance on this show all the and way back only on episode show. and only this show <laughs> all the way back to episode 34. We got a message from Deej. He's like, hey, this is a small time creator. Maybe you should give him a little bump. And since then, he's received over 200 more followers on Twitch <laughs> yeah, uh, 200 <laughs> and beyond. So the numbers have really skyrocketed and who, and, and after 200, we stopped counting. Uh, please welcome back to the show after a long break. Dr. Lupo. Hi, that's me. Hello, Hello guys. Hey buddy. Uh, uh, Bones Lupo. clearly did his research. 34. Somebody was clicking, clicking the back button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went through the way. Yeah. I went machine. one episode at a time all the way until the first one, but I figured it out. You want to know what's funny is I, I can tell you exactly when because I still to this day have the exclamation point CR command in my channel. Crucible Radio <laughs> episode thirty four changes good. Crucible Radio episode sixty eight a banner review. Oh yeah, that's me, boys. I hold on to those man because it's like uh, you you guys. We I mean I've mentioned a million times, but you were the first podcast. You were my you you were my first. Wait, oh my Everyone god, remembers their first too. That means so much to us. <laughs> So, you know, it was good. It felt pretty good. Was it good for you? It was good for me. It, it yeah, was it was pretty good for us. Pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to lie. Why am I sweating? I have a question. Uh, when you first came on episode 34, we spent some time uh, talking about your, your strange, strange choice to use a mouse and keyboard in Destiny. <laughs> yeah, and dude. probably that's explained why everyone hated you so much. Yeah, everybody and hates And yet you're me. still using it and everyone I else know. is doing mouse and keyboard. Yeah. How do you explain it now? I mean, I'm, I I made it so that it was accepted, you know? It's, it, was, uh, it was all me, dude. All me. No. I, the trailblazer. I, you know, I just want to make sure that everybody that's cheating like I was back then is uh, able to cheat openly. No, that's not That's not true. <laughs> That's before somebody's like, wow, I told you, dude, three years ago, look, <laughs> let me pull up the Twitch logs. Look right here. I said, Lupo, you're going to get banned, you nerd. See, I pointed out right there that he was cheating. <laughs> I told uh-huh. you. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry. It's, it's, still it's not, 2018 still- now. People are using Wii controllers. They're playing Destiny with the uh, with the Donkey Konga pads. I saw a guy play Overwatch on a baguette once. So. <laughs> 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 He was playing Widowmaker, and in the middle of it, he took a bite of it. Did you see that? That was amazing. <laughs> That's actually uh, in Overwatch canon. Widowmaker takes a bite every time she gets killed. He played PUBG with a an actual frying pan, too. Did you see that? Same guy. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you've got some competition in the novelty gaming segment. Yeah, all Twitch. these people trying to use mouse and keyboard in Destiny now, dude. Come on. <laughs> it's like it's out on PC. It's ridiculous. <laughs> they, ruined it. they act like that is all I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, to, to get serious for a moment, um, 
It's different though, right? I mean, you're playing on PC now. You've got like four graphics cards in the thing and you've <laughs> got the mouse and keyboard. Um, but for, for people who like got the mouse and keyboard working back in the console days who are now on PC, it's not it's it's not the same thing, right? It's a different thing. No, it's yeah, uh, it's way better now. <laughs> if <you're> playing native <laughs> dude, playing native is is just like it's like a magical journey. It's like Aladdin truly wanted me to see the entire world, right? And so here we are. I'm on a magic carpet ride. I, that that analogy didn't really make sense. There's a big disconnect there. But listen, if you're if you're listening to the podcast, just everybody just nod your head and be like, "Yeah, I kind of got that." Uh-huh. And then we'll all <laughs> yeah. be good. The, the, it, the short of it is, it used to not be all that easy, and now it's easy. Now it's easy, and it's and it's a wonderful thing. And and I have a couple zims that are sitting over on some shelves that are just gathering dust now because man, I will openly say this. PVP at D2 release for in vanilla was, for me, lackluster. Uh, some people, a few people might agree. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but with the release of we'll Forsaken... We'll never know. Yeah, we'll never know. There's no <laughs> way... <laughs> Scientists are still researching to this day to see if they can figure out if that was the case or not. Yeah, I, w- know. I wish them the best. <laughs> but uh, now that Forsaken is out, oh, man. Oh man, I've been I have been playing I I have been loving PvP. Chaperone and uh, Arsenic Bite, what a glorious combo. And you make people so sad so fast with it. Uh, I've been running obviously everybody's got an ace of spades. Um and then what's the shotgun from uh Dreaming City? Uh that uh, retold that tail. Yeah. Chop yes. chop. Retold tail. Retold, I've, been, retold tail. I've been running that combo uh just like every other sweaty nerd out there. Sorry. Just saying, it's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I picked up my Malfeasance for uh, for Gambit, and it rips in the raid too. It, that thing's glorious. I've got Wish Ender, which they're in the pro- it, it, I don't stay as up to date on patch notes or, or like the uh, bug fixes. Are they fixing that in PvP? I, I, it does like not all the damage on moving targets mm. is what I hear. They they had at least the bug report of it. I don't know if they've okay. got a bug fix in place. But yeah, you okay. get the damage going in. You don't get the damage going out if they're moving fast. Uh, I've been yeah, doing like, like fast. all the stuff. And I remember, uh, if I recall, we talked about, I, I was, I think it was with you guys. I think it was with you guys. Um, uh, we talked about some Destiny after I, when I had not been playing too much. Uh, I was also on DCP um, and uh, another, uh, I have no idea who they are. Just made up some letters. There is only one <laughs> podcast if you're listening. Uh, yep. Thank you. But I, I <laughs> talked to some other individuals that have played Destiny one time. And I remember the chat. Here's a hundred dollars. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I had, and I had seen in the chat, they were like, why do you have Lupo on? He doesn't even play Destiny. And I'm over here like, shut your mouth, young man. Your room. <laughs> because, I distinctly like, remember a time though. Where you really you I, I mean I I talk I think it might have been when we were at the summit and I talked to you about it and you were like I want to play but I just can't stream it and it's yeah. hard to not play video games Dude. and stream so because because the because chat was would just be like it, it, it was it was in a I would have I would have people that would literally click through all the Destiny streams in the directory before Forsaken but after D two release that would just come in the chat and be like. Wow, you play this shit game. Oh, bye. And I was like, you don't even follow the channel. You just, you're literally just like clicking through to spread hate. And no other game I've ever played, I've ever ever streamed, has had that happen. And I enjoy, dude. I'm real talk. I enjoyed Vanilla Destiny. I thought it was fun. Yeah, the PvP was kind of poop if you didn't have like a good group to run with. But I maybe maybe this is the hottest take is that before Forsaken, I thought Destiny Two was was fun to play. It yeah, wasn't it was whatever. Fine. It wasn't what everybody <laughs> it was, wanted. It was fine. It was fine. It, great. That being said, before somebody's like, "Wow, look at this guy. He wants it back to the way it was before." No, 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 no. I think that D two, what we have right now, is the best destiny that we have ever had. Oh, hands down. Yeah, no question. If you offered me a hundred thousand dollars to change it back. I'd say, no, thank you, sir. It, it, it's be, be, because, and that's just a random number. The, no, nobody out there, please don't offer me $100,000 because uh, I don't, I don't want to go down that more. <laughs> I, I just donated $100,000. I demand you change it <laughs> right, back. All right, Lupo, change it back. Deal is a deal. <laughs> no, uh, but I, there, 
it's just in such a good place. And the chat now is so positive. Yeah, you get some trolls. I, I still get teabagged and somebody comes in the chat and is like, huh, my little brother just beat you. Do you want to talk about it? And I'm like, no, <laughs> he, he could sub to me maybe. But I mean, no, like, I don't really want to talk. It's whatever, dude. Like everybody, everybody beats me. Don't worry. Like I, I'm, I don't focus on there. There was a time where I was very competitive oriented. That time has, I think, come and gone because the the path that my career has taken has definitely changed since the even the D two PC beta and and bef- and the last time that we talked. It, yeah, it definitely has uh, the trajectory is is much different now than it was before. So, but the game's so good, man. It's gentlemen, it is so freaking good. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to get that out there. So, Lubo, if you had the choice, what are you doing the most of right now when you are playing? If I had the choice, so you mean like in Destiny or just or games? Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like in Destiny, uh, there's a lot of like milestones and like powerful gear to get and things to chase. But screw if, all that. If all of that's gone, what are you choosing to play the most? Swain, of? screw everything you just named. If I cannot get a title by the end of this week, I'm going to lose my mind. And there's too much stuff going on. <laughs> they added, they, but this is a title, dude. I'm I'm one step away from dredging. I um, I need the ship, the sparrow, and the ghost, and I'm so close to that title, I can taste it. I need. Let's see. I need one more reset, and I I I need my third meatball kill, dude. I'm I I I'm livid week. about this actually. So I was playing with another content creator uh, of the Destiny variety. You may have heard of him. King Gathalion is the yeah King. Ha <laughs> ha! Wow, dude. Hmm. Um, no, it, we we got it to spawn one time, and the other team just melted theirs down super fast. Hmm. And I was like, dude, why did you not just kill it? Why did you not just <laughs> call Bungie and have them kill it for us? And he didn't do it. Can you believe that? You didn't press the, the Bungie audacity. button? Yeah, I, I was about to text Deej real quick. He's like, bro, can you, just, <laughs> can you just take this out for me, please? And it didn't happen. And uh, so I'm I'm one short. <laughs> like I said, I know. Can you believe it, right? <laughs> How dare they? The other team played the video game. Unbelievable. <laughs> but uh, it's... I'm I'm looking for titles, dude. That That is a very cool addition. It is a cosmetic that is not a cosmetic. You know what I mean? It's a it's a an aesthetic thing where they're like, I'm gonna run into th- into the tower, and everybody's like, "Bro, you have purple text <gasps> below your name. That's <laughs> sick." And I'm like, "That's right, dude. <laughs> that is me." And it it's just a cool thing. It reminds me a lot of World of Warcraft, and I play the crap out of WoW, and so that connection. I like that it has like the you can buy an actual thing once you reach it too. Like, right. That's such a like a like a small addition. To the Forsaken, but having like a physical thing that you yeah. worked for. Dude, it, it carries over without even having to be in the game now. I think that was a way for them to connect the audience to maybe they're working on a sequel, dude. Who knows? But because we, one of the things about Destiny 1 into Destiny 2 that disappointed me is they, they made a claim. And to a point, they were they never really misled, but we were all kind of sad. When they said, "Yeah, your guardian will carry over into the fall into the next game," and then we found out they're like, "It's just the way your character looks, and literally nothing else." <laughs> and <laughs> the so, one thing you really want to bring over for oh, that, year. that thing it's that, that I haircut can, that's all fucked up. Yeah, in that thing I can remake in like thirty seconds. Sick, dude. That's awesome. But it, this is a this is an out of game, it, you know, collectible thing. Uh, I think isn't Ace of Spades one of them? Yeah, you can get the little uh, you, you know, the recreation get, of Ace and Spades. Yeah. You can get the Luna's Hal. Yeah, can, dude. You can get the little uh, title badges. That that to me is that's super cool. That is there's no better way to outline a hobby game like this than to say, yeah, I I, I have all this stuff in game, but also check out my shelf of Destiny yo know, achievement paraphernalia. You know, it, that's probably not the right word. That sounds like. Like drug addiction related. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Bungie, strike that from the record. My apologies. Uh, collectibles. You know what I mean? Like that is, that's super cool to me that they're doing something like that because it shows to me that because I've seen the community cry out for give me hobby stuff to do. Make Destiny the thing that I'm like, 
you know what? I got two hours each day. I'm just going to play Destiny. I got I can do this this week and this this week and this this week. And right now the game is so, it's so deep with stuff to do that only, I feel like only content creators are really able to right now exhaust the entirety of, of what Destiny has to offer on a week-to-week basis. And that's good. Somebody out there is going to say, yeah, well, I didn't get to do this this week. Good. You had to make a choice. And that is good for a video game for it to survive because you would rather that you'd be like, all right, this week I'm doing this thing. Next week I'm going to get this stuff done and then I'm going to do this thing. You don't want it to be like, all right, I logged on in 15 minutes. I'm done. Cool. Bye. Because I remember World of Warcraft dailies, dude. That sucked. (laughs) That was not fun. I feel like the choice I make is like, I look at the uh, the 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 screen. I see all the things I got to go do, and then I look at the clock, and then I look back at the screen, and I look back at the clock, and then I usually end up picking the screen. I'm staying up too late. So I got a problem. I got a real good collectible problem. Let's put it that way. It's um, I was gonna, I was gonna say Destiny Two is the first game that I've played off stream in a year hmm, since Forsaken release. That's it. That's fantastic. Well, let, let's let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. I wanna I wanna circle back to some of these big picture things. Um, but you talked a little bit about your loadout, and let's let's just talk about PvP, right? Um, you know, we can talk about Gambit for sure. But uh, one thing I'm curious about in D1, I mean, you had a fairly strong identity as as a sniper, right? Mm-hmm. You were pulling off like surprising snipes, and and I love seeing you. You're, you're still doing it. Um, but I guess I'm sort of wondering how you, I mean, how you see sniping in D2 right now, um, but also kind of how you see, you know, whether it's comp or meta or or what, how you, how you see, you know, is there space for someone who identifies as a real a real sharp shot with a sniper? Um, is there space for them in this game to to really do their thing and shine? Um, there is, but it's a different play style than Destiny One, in my opinion. Um, Destiny One, you could challenge lanes. Relatively often, often enough that you could make an impact on the the way that an, uh, an enemy rotated, their positioning, that kind of thing. Uh, if you had established a certain lane, like dominance in a certain lane, the opponent would rotate a different direction. Like you could say, no, 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 boys, you're not going this way. You have to go a diff- different way because if you poke your head out, I'm going to rip it off. In D2, because the way that that flinch functions and how easily you can it, it, it is to just miss shots if you get sprayed by even an AR. It, you don't even, I feel like a lot of the time you don't even have to have like high cal or anything like that on. Uh, sniping in Destiny 2 right now feels very much like a, a, a peekers game. You have to know where people are going to be, you know, rotating maybe around a corner, that kind of thing. You're watching down a lane, but you can't expose yourself until you're ready to take the shot. So it's a lot of flick shooting. It's a lot of very, very fast reactions you can't really stake claim of a lane and some of the map design and i'm going to use in my opinion the worst map in the game a uh, vostok dude sorry sorry I'm, I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> to rough. whoever designed that map i'm really sorry that you made all those mistakes uh but no i'm kidding it, it's just not my favorite map because of the it's it's basically a big circle with a bunch of shotguns in the middle all pointing out different directions it's <laughs> tough to snipe on that map Minus maybe one or two little paths, but even then, if the because of the range of the map, everybody's running pulse rifles or or scouts, uh, not really scouts. Everybody's running pulse rifles. Let's be honest, and so you can't really counter snipe those players because just because of the nature of sniping in D two. So it's like sniping is a, it's a very narrow player base that has that has the ability to do so because you have to like jump out, take the shot. And, and duck back in because if you're if you're standing there and somebody sees you, you good luck hitting that shot you bet might as well be aiming for their toes and hope flinch carries it up into the face which i've done before but not often so do you find yourself i mean you know moving into position out in the open or just you know quickly swapping to your sniper taking up close shots or just kind of waiting for the moment and taking it when it comes versus setting up in lanes i I've been taking way more trash shots than, than I normally would. And I, by trash shot, I mean like, you know how you sit in your office and you, you have this, you know, maybe a, a report or something that you're like, ah, I don't need this. Maybe it's like a, a newsletter or something, something stupid. You know, you ball it up and you just like whoosh, whip it at the trash can. That's kind of what sniping feels like for me a lot of the time <laughs> right now. 
you like slide out around a corner. I'm like, I know guys sometimes spawn here and I'll scope in. And I'm like, if there, if I, if my brain thinks there's a guy there, I'll take a shot and I'll hit him sometimes or not. If there's nobody there, obviously. And then you know, maybe try and follow up with a spades shot or, or whatever my primary is at the time and then slide away. There's very few times where I'm like, I'm going to sit here and I know that there's going to be a guy here in a second, or maybe he's flying through the air. It's even, it's even tough. Sometimes it feels like to, uh, to, to take shots at people that are, that are jumping in the open because oftentimes those areas on the maps, um, is it, is the name of the map emperor's respite? Is that, that's the one. Yep. Uh, yeah. Outside uh, and kind of the rocky area. It, oftentimes there are people, people will be very vertical up, up over there or in, uh, like on the, uh, the balcony lane on the far right side. And you can kind of take shots of people in the air, but there's almost always, it feels like there's almost always somebody else there. And so you're going to get flinched out of it. So it's just not as effective where in destiny one, I could hit those people out of the sky. Even if I was getting shot at by somebody else, just because of the nature of the game, that's kind of why I've shifted to, if I need to do long range, I'm rocking a bow. Um, I, I feel like they are in such a good spot. They're effective. Let's talk about bows. Let's talk about bows. I feel like there's not really a space in high level play. There's not really an identity for them in high level play because there's just, you know, there, there's, there's shotguns, there's uh, hand cannons that are reliable. It's not a one hit kill on your own. Tell me how you use a bow. How do you go off? So... By design, it's like a it's it is a fusion rifle with infinite range that you release within a window instead of a charge up time. There's a charge up time, but when you hit the the max the charge up, it's still a fusion rifle to to a point. It's a hit scan infinite range fusion rifle, but one that you you have to use in a, in a, a, a minimal exposure method or. And this is what I've been doing, and it's been frustrating people that I played against. I know because they sometimes will say so in chat afterwards. Um, you th- just throw Icarus on an arsenic bite, and then jump around in the air and and shoot people in the head from above. And <laughs> y- you might think that ah, seems pretty <laughs> stupid. No, 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 no. Triple jump, and I I am a fan of control jump in PvP. But if I'm going to run a bow uh, in a, in a competitive environment, triple jump sometimes is like the key to what you need. Because you have that top down with Icarus on it, that thing is a laser beam. And you can hit headshots and then a follow-up body with arsenic because the draw time is so fast mm-hmm. that comboing a two-hit is is a cakewalk. I've done it a ton of times on stream. Plus, it's like if you're traveling fast, if you're jumping through the air around a corner, you can just whip a very high damage shot with a hit with like hip fire with a bow. That's very accurate. Way easier, I feel like, than anything else that hits that hard because of the way that the bows are designed. They're meant to be used in an agile way. It is not a sit and own a lane weapon because you can't one hit. There's no way to own a, own a lane with, with something that does not one hit. That's why I've been using Chaperone in my primary because it can one hit from a pretty pretty ridiculous range as well. Man, what a shotgun. Um, <laughs> but the combo together just makes me, it feels like, it feels like the next level of, of destiny aerobatics that I, that we wanted in, in D one, but everybody's like, ah, you can't, there's no mid-air accuracy. You should try this combo, man. If you're looking for it, because granted chaperone won't land the headshot every single time. It's not, you know, it's not pinpoint. It's an, it's an, it's a one hit with a follow-up after a bow shot to the face. If you're within range, even if you hit him the body. So, and it's so fast to swap. I, I literally just want to boot up destiny right now, boys. And play. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. That's a good sign. No, I feel like when I first was playing with the bow and I kind of got uh, I kind of got lost in it for a bit. Um, but I think one thing that impressed me was just how good they felt to use in air. Like yeah. it's even without the Icarus, it is it is not too difficult to land your shots in air. Um, I didn't think I was going to be doing it in PvP, so I'm glad you're I'm glad you're out there doing it, man. Dude, it's it is very good, and I, I hope that people are kind of embracing it. Like you said, though, the problem with them. In the competitive side, if you're going to queue in a comp and you're bringing a bow, you're probably going to get shotgun in the face. They don't really have a place in competitive unless you're you're you have a good support system with you, or you're you're the guy that's like finishing or starting the elims. Um, just because a shotgun is a shotgun is a shotgun. A shotgun's going to one hit every time. Sniping is is difficult in competitive as well. Pretty much, you're going to bring a shotgun because people are very very fast 
And you want one hitters because you you have the ability to clear a team. On top of that, like sniping doesn't have, doesn't have as big of a place. Typically, you run one or none, and like a, you know the super sweaty teams, because when you snipe a guy, he drops a little green box. You can't run over there and get that because there's a pretty good mm. chance that his whole team is right there, and well, they're going to shoot you in the face. So that that shotgunning puts you right inside the mouth of your opponent. You know, you put the barrel in there and then the green box literally it like loads into the gun automatically. It feels like because you're you're right on top of them. So just by design, shotguns and competitive have uh, the upper hand. And uh, I'm not sure how you might go about fixing that, to be honest with you. It'd be nice to see uh, see something else start to shine. Fusions are pretty good. Uh, because they they the same the same sort of rule set applies that sh- uh, to fusions that applies to shotguns. You want to be right on top of them almost. But with a bow or a snipe, unless you're using a snipe like it as a shotgun, good luck. By the way, uh, <laughs> it's just not going to be as effective. Yeah, let's talk about chaperone a little bit because uh, mm. I dug out my chaperone and I, and look, I, I play on PC, but I play with a controller, which I think is probably wow probably cheater not helping me. <clears throat> uh, <know>. Sorry, <clears throat> I know. Uh, Lupo, I switched to mouse and keyboard. I hope oh, you'll be proud of me. Are you a good boy? <laughs> Bones. Oh, are you happy for me, Daddy? Bones, yay! And did it. My, you know my G502, man. Just right next to it. It's beautiful. You, you should look into Final Mouse, cough, cough, hashtag ad. Uh, oh, no, yeah. Dude, they're so, they're so nice. Anyway, listen, okay, birds, not everyone's perfect. And I accept your faults. All right. <laughs> hey, hey, man, you and me both, right? <laughs> <laughs> It ain't easy being us. I mean, it varies. But, Not there's some um, solid control, dude. It, it, <laughs> I, the the root of it is it doesn't really matter. Well, and and that's it, right? Like there there's there's a, a level of skill that I think translates once you have time to acclimate. Um, but let's talk about Chamberon in particular because I was I was I pulled it out. I was like, ooh, this is this is good. These people are good with this. I'll do it. And I found I would get a body shot. And then there would be a long pause as I get ready to take the next shot, and then I'm dead. And I queued in, uh, I was playing quick play, and I queued in against someone from BSK last night who was Ouch. using the chaperone. And we would have those same sort of like, you know, you have a little corner showdown where you know you're both on the other side. It's like, who's going to slide out first and who's got better aim? And he won every single one of those against me because one, he had better aim, but two, he was so much farther away than I was and just so reliably landing that headshot. I mean, I. You know, the perks are the perks. I know how it works, but like, what am I, am I just missing headshots? Is that what I'm doing wrong? There's, there is a feel for that gun. I, I, I feel like in my heart that you have, you have to be acclimated to it. It, it's a shotgun, but it's not really a shotgun. The way that I typically play when I have it is it's a one shot hand cannon is how I treat it when I'm carrying it around. Mm. And mm. you have to use it at a range where you would, you would, this is funny to imagine, but I use it a range where I think to myself, if I had an actual hand cannon, I'd shoot this guy once and then maybe twice and then melee immediately as I'm holding forward at him. That's kind of the the effective range for a headshot. So you like you have the momentum and you're going to take the shot and then go for the melee lunge. But you don't ever actually do that. You just pull chaperone out and pop him in the face. I'm, after that, man, it's it, you kind of you, you know, you have to aim for the head to get a headshot. Yeah, that's <laughs> but, I'm I mean, working on it, man. I'm working on it. It is it is a little weird at first because you'll feel like you're getting sniped by people when in fact they're just more used to the distance at which the weapon is truly effective. Well, and and that's it. Like when that roadborne perk is active, the one shot one one shot kill range is is absurd. It it's is, awesome. It is far outclassed any any other shotgun in the game. Yeah, I they need to they need to do that more. I'm I'm down with that. <laughs> It feels <laughs> working for you, dude. It feels so good when you hit those, and you know yeah. that those people they pop around the corner like, I have my retold tail out. I'm gonna slide into the. Oh, I'm dead now. And you know, <laughs> and they see the little shotgun icon. They're like, Oh, bro, come on. He's like so far away. And then they realize the chaperone. You know they're frustrated because <laughs> I yeah. because that's me too because I identify with that person so well. I'm like, Yeah, dude, I'm frustrated too. But it's a it's a good it's a good feeling because you know that that everybody's kind of learning from it, especially because if I did not get mapped by that chaperone, then I would not know the effective mapping range. You know, (laughs) important to know is super important to know. (laughs) 
I'd actually love to hear your thoughts on on hand cannons just overall right now, because I remember like the little trailer they put out, like three taps are back. And I think everyone is excited for the better devils of the game. But now we've got Ace of Spades, which is an exotic and like Luna's, which is a 180, not really the hand cannon everyone thought they might be using. But what do you think about uh, hand cannons? Because I just remember I just remember that IS Luna glued to your hand for yeah, for years. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. what are they like now for you? So here's here's point number one. If if you're listening out there and you're thinking, yeah, I don't really want to work on this Ace of Spades quest. It, it's a lot of work. Shut your mouth and, <laughs> and get it. Get it. It's so get it. ridiculous. It's so good. And making people blow up is so good that uh, m- when you have Memento Mori activated and you are smacking people for 90 plus in Crucible and you know that they're like, oh, wow, I'm going to challenge this guy. And then they're, they have literally no shield in one hit. It, it, there's panic moment. You know you have the upper hand. The thing is effective. It, it, it does its job. It is There is a reason I guarantee you that. I, I'm making this number up, but I would not be surprised if it was accurate. 75% of, of, of kinetic weapon kills have got to be in PVP right now, have got to be Ace of Spades. It, or right. something, you heard it here, folks. Something stupid. In comp, at least. Yeah. In comp, at least. Yeah. It's, it's that good that everybody's using it. If you recall before Forsaken, Mida was everywhere. It's it, it has filled the same role, but not in a way to me that feels bad it, because the damage drop off is pretty abrupt when it when it's time for it to not be as effective so you know that you're outside the effective range of this weapon uh did i feel like they did a good job with that and that applies to kind of every hand cannon from my experience that is in a a a pretty dang good spot uh but like you're saying you don't we don't really have like a eyes luna palindrome style weapon but and you mentioned luna's howl but gentlemen can we talk about not forgotten (laughs) <laughs> you can, <And> can. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with this weapon is that not very many people will ever see it but it is a 183 smacker that just it's gross it is so gross it it's exactly what people wanted from a this is like yeah you you could probably bring it in the, into the raid and I, I talked to gigs a little bit about it and he said it's it's actually stupidly fun in uh, Last Wish right now. It, it's really effective. But, man, if you run into somebody that's got a Not Forgotten or it, within effective range, Luna's Howl, because the range is much lower uh, on Luna's than than mm-hmm. Forgotten is. But if you they have one of those two, it's just, man, it makes you feel really bad about yourself because it hits so fast. And if you get those precision hits and you get the perk to activate, whoo, three tap. It, like you would not believe it's it's incredible what a good weapon maybe what <laughs> dream big okay swain i believe in you all right uh, bones you, you believe in swain, me, right? Lupa? Uh, uh i got a oh man look at the time i got a thing i got a, <laughs> i i wish i had the time to help people with that my, my schedule right now is not that we have to transition to that but my schedule is absolutely crazy so Oh yeah, we're all very busy. There's a lot of <laughs> we're all I'm busy. busy. That's why I don't have it <laughs> into different areas of maps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well, with Forsaken, we've got uh gosh, nine new subclasses. Like by the way, or subclass paths, whatever. Still getting my head wrapped around them. Um. I'm curious. I mean, you mentioned playing on your hunter earlier. I mean, what have you gravitated towards so far? Um. And then just sort of big picture overall. W- w- what do you like, and what do you think has got legs in this meta? Uh, I like many hunters before me, and many hunters that will come after me, made the wrong choice with my first <laughs> seed of light. <laughs> I went down the uh, middle tree for Night Stalker, and it, granted, it is flashy. And it's super cool. And I like that, like the the stealth on precision headshots for if you're trying to cheese. Uh, ah, I mean, uh, creative mechanics, uh, certain portions of the PVE side of the game. It could be really good for that. You can survive in places where you probably shouldn't uh, for way longer than you should be alive. But man, the first time you see, you're like, all right, I'm going to queue in the in the crucible. Cool. We use this new Night Stalker tree that I'm going to rip people up. They will never see it coming. Oh, <laughs> literally, because I'll be invisible. You're like, wait a second. That dude, it says Golden Gun. 
but he just threw a billion knives at people and everybody's <laughs> dead. You're like, dude, Way of a Thousand Cuts is absolutely one of the coolest things they've ever put in the game for hunters. The super is so much fun. It's flashy. It reminds me of playing Rogue and WoW, Fan of Knives. You just whoosh and everybody dies. It, it's, it is stupidly effective. There, I can't count the number of times because it's two throws that you like jump up in the air and you're about to pop your super in, in Crucible and you're like, all right, there's a dude in front of me. But then you get hit in the back and you're like, I'm going to find you too. And you like whip the first one. Then I'll swing the mouse around to do the 180 super quick and throw the second, the second set of knives and I'll find him and you'll see him just go, oh God. And then they both <laughs> melt in both, in both directions. You're like, yeah, this is my territory. It just feels so good to use it. And you, I, you, I feel like a hunter. I feel like when you look at the class, when you, when you've seen you know, like read the lore and, and, F's and chat boys for Cade, but you know, the way that, that Cade kit just like Cade carried himself and all the, all the cinematics, it just, it feels very Hunter to me. And so seeing that in the game, using it against other players, it makes me feel powerful uh, in a way that, that I'm sorry, man, but the other two new, new trees could get deleted and I wouldn't be upset. Give me way a thousand cuts for life. <laughs> It's so pour so one out good. for Nova Bomb. Just, <laughs> Sorry, it's just it's just the way it <laughs> completely is, shown up. Oh man, it's what, so uh, good. What exotic are you pairing with, uh, Mister Mister Knives? Um, so I've been running. I was running Frosties for a while, um, and it felt pretty good because when you're running a chaperone, you have kind of a lower, a lower, a slower re- reload speed. And so being able to dodge more often because I'm like sprinting around like crazy. So you get your, you know, your ability back off of that feels pretty good. But then, but then hmm. stoppies also exist. And I like flying over people. So I, I actually recently just switched it up. I grabbed from my collections. Uh, Cause I, I like a 300 something set of stompies. Um, I grabbed from my collections like a 570 or whatever it is for the, the light I'm at now. And have been running those. And dude, long range slides with a chaperone or a, or a bow jumping over the top of people. Well, it feels like a million miles in the air. They just don't even look up at you and you just blink, 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 and they die. It it's good. The that agility, that the mobility you gain from stompies combined with the weapon set that I've been running in in public matches has been some of the most fun crucible I've ever played. <laughs> I love it. Well, I don't want to talk about the fun. I want to talk about the min maxing. Um, ah! On your armor, uh, what what perks are standouts for you for this loadout, and what mods are you running? Okay, um, so I've been I have been consistently running a shotgun, either chaperone or retail tail. The, regardless of what setup I'm like, what I'm using, I will run and uh, prepare for this uh, pump action to get super energy. Oh, naturally. shotgun scavenger. Sure. Uh, shotgun, I believe, is a, is it called reserves? Is it the, the, the extra one. ammo? And then yep. um, shotgun loader on on my boots. If I'm not running an exotic, it, you name a shotgun perk, I am probably using it. Every yeah, single shotgun. slot that that I can fit a, uh, a shotgun perk on, I have it because they're that they're that effective. And for competitive, you kind of have to run those. You mm. if you if you're not people, especially dude, especially on your helm, get pump action. I get four supers a game, which is <laughs> is a, if effectively a crap ton. I looked it up. I just Googled it. They said that it's a crap ton. Okay. Mm. Webster's doesn't lie. <laughs> I mean, there must not be any, because I've, I've, we talked about it at the top of the show. I've spent some time looking at the perks. I don't think there's really anything else quite as high value that you can get in that first slot on a helmet. Cause like, you know, they even so. have the enhanced version of ashes to assets. And like maybe in D one, you were getting one hit grenade kills, but I mean, bro, the fusions they, they, don't one hit dude. What's the point of the perk when I can do, I can one hit with a shotgun. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I'm right there with you. It, it's cool to see that there's other stuff in there and consider them a consolation prize. But once you get pump action, if you're running a shotgun all the time, that's kind of it. Screw everything else. Right. Now, now that's not the the end of the story though. Like you said, there's mods too because you have you have all the uh, you know five slots to fill on your armor and then your weapon setup too. So as far as armor mods go, I've kind of been spreading a little bit uh, across the board. I'll have one or maybe two super mods just to get my super back 
literally as fast as possible. That combined with pump action is is how I get four a game. It's very fast. Um, I like having a Paragon mod for class ability regen because the reload on the dodge that I use as a hunter is effective enough that I can reload my chaperone. Like if I'm in a pinch, like I'll smack one dude and I have one shell left and I'll smack another dude. And like there's green boxes on the ground, but my radar is, is lighting up like freaking Christmas. I'll run over them super quick and dodge through the last one and it'll load all the shells in and then I can keep fighting. Because if you dude, if you don't have that, it is a struggle if you're trying to put one shell in, take a shot, and man, if you miss, you just kind of like, <laughs> sorry, gotta go. And they're not very happy <laughs> with that and they shoot you and you die. Uh, so I, I feel like a Paragon mod is important. After that, it's kind of preference. I... Regen is the next is the follow up. I mean, everything else is crap in comparison. Yeah, you get some resilience up to to three or four, uh, and depending on what class you're running, is d- different builds depending on what you want to survive a certain number of shots from, so to say. But uh, I usually run run three resil and as much as much recovery a- as I can and handle. I think I've been running six three six. I think that's when I, I think that's how I'm spec right now. Six three six. I think I could get six three seven, but I'd have to change out a, a piece that I didn't want to. Um, and th- that's off the top of my head, y'all. So is somebody out there is listening? Like you actually can't mathematically get that, Lupo. I apologize. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's six three six, but it's been it's because mobility mobility hunter. I mean, you're gonna have it no matter what. You might as well not fight against it. But recovery is so important. Man, it's so important because the number of times we're probably like, all right, I hit this bow shot on a guy, but he also bodied me with a snipe. I should probably sit here behind this wall and cry for a minute. Oh God, he's pushing me. If it were not for the recovery, then I would I would get squished. Instead, I I get to flail around a little bit before I get squished, essentially. So word. Sorry, I'm long. <laughs> hey, y'all didn't know it's so like, wow, Lupo really just sees very thorough. He, I was like, no. oh, he does play. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. To everybody out there that's like, Lupo, you don't play. You shut your mouth. All right. I'm just kidding. I love you. I love all of you. Even the haters, dude. You don't get this anywhere episode's without the for haters. the haters. This episode is absolutely for the haters. By the way, Icarus on Arsenic Bite, y'all. Just do it. Trust me. I know other people have said, ah, no, just do this instead. No, I'm sorry. Shut your that's mouth. A, put put an Icarus mod on there. Icarus with. <laughs> our, 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 our Dude, bite. seriously it's so good i've tried all the other bows they're yeah they're cool the one from the raid is cool looking but the the reload time on it sucks i can't tell you how many i i tried it for one night for one match boys it took one match before i was like Oof. nope does not load arrows fast enough this is shit <laughs> for I, I just checked it's uh reload speed 28 on Bro, that versus so the low. the 65 on our civic <laughs> so bite so slow dude and you I could did not t- realize that i even chat could tell the first fight that I took, I was like, all right, I'm a two pop this dude. And they've been watching me play with Arsenic for a, a couple matches before that. So they're like, yeah, he's going to boom, boom. And he's dead. And I hit the first one. And then they're like, where's the arrow? I'm like, <laughs> hold on. I'm crafting it. Wait. All right. It's ready. <laughs> it's, it's bad. The bow itself is cool. It looks super cool. It's gorgeous. Like the art style for right now for the last wish weapons is so sick. I have like the yeah. I have the the curated uh, masterwork role of uh, of the hand Ooh. cannon, and it's oh, oh oh I'm rubbing my face with how good it is. But the bow is is it's it, it's dookie, dude. It's I mean for PvP at least for PvP it's just it just pales in comparison. Plus if you have arsenic yeah. bite and the, with the the ornament on it, mm, so good that neon blue is beautiful. Mm. Yeah, I play Bones. All right. I freaking play, dude. <laughs> I love Destiny. All right, Destiny. I believe you. I love Destiny. It's in such a good spot. It is it is exactly what so many people wanted. And I know there's people out there before you're like, wow, Lupo's just fanboying. Listen, I get it that some people did like the uh, the old style PvP. Uh, one Summit 1G uh, one time talked about it on his stream and how we chose this. And I was like, brother, <laughs> do you not remember? <laughs> Can we all join hands and and pray at at what once was right and how no one wanted that and where we yeah. are now is is I'm not saying it's it's perfect yeah you still have people that are like 
Oh, this guy's shotgun me again. Shotgun me again. You know what? Stop. Maybe stop challenging that corner where you know he's sitting there with his hand in his pants waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, that was probably always the 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 advice we gave long ago. And if it, it's nice to come back to it again, yeah. like maybe <laughs> you should just get good and avoid that guy. Yeah, listen, you know that guy's sitting there. You and your buddy both just bring your arc nades out, chuck them right there at the same time. Boom, he's gone. Like, like you can coordinate stuff and take those people out, and there's ways to counterplay, and not everybody understands that. Try jumping at that doorway. Dude, trust me. When a dude ro- walks out and he's like, I swear there was just a guy here, and you're above him and you plug him in the face, it feels good. <laughs> Outplay people. Bait your teammates. It's okay to do that. You know, Bones might go down, dude, but his swings there to just slide in and clean it up. Who cares? Right? As long as that guy dies and I did half damage, it's, then I'm good. Exactly, dude. <laughs> There's it, all I'm saying is like, yeah, the, the old version of what you know what we what we played before, where it was everyone was holding hands and we were all trying to give each other a little OTPHJ, you know, while we're running around to, you know, as a group. And somebody's gonna be like, I don't know what that is. I'm gonna have to look that up. Enjoy that. <laughs> Enjoy that. Uh, it's quite the Google know, search. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean, though, right? Like. The old way some people did like, but man, it, it wasn't, it was probably more competitive in, in a traditional shooter sense in a mm-hmm. CSGO halo sense, but it's, it just wasn't destiny, dude. It had its merits in that field where you could be like, Hey, this could be a level of competitive if it was perfect, but, yeah, but it uh, wasn't perfect. It missed the fun, which was like actually the the key to destiny. Me feeling like I could do something instead of having to wait for my buddies to show up. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was, I think maybe in it, the PC beta phase was different because, well, let's face it. There were a lot of bad players. Uh, <laughs> and, and they gave us an explosive rounds, better devils out of the gate, which let me tell you with the mouse is oh, so good. Uh, but when when the game actually came out, I think we all collectively went, "Wait, what? This this is not what we played during the. This is different. What happened? Everybody's what? Everybody's in a pack. That guy is actually four guys. What happened? And things changed. <laughs> so guys uh, become the, four guys. It's a real complicated. It's my, it's everyone is suddenly multiple man. <laughs> well, that that kind of brings up a, a topic that's interesting to me, which is. Yeah. You know, when 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 the game has gotten much faster, you know, the time to kill is lower, it gets a little chaotic, and you're playing quick play, it's fun. When you're at sort of very high skill levels, um, you know, the, the the speed at which this takes place really gets exaggerated. One thing I'm curious about, um, the DTR Champions League just released their uh, Tournament Rules 2.0, which I think sort of in response to um, a lot of the buffs we've seen have locked a lot of stuff down. So no power weapons, no exotic armor, no grenade launchers. Um, you know, a lot of sort of bands dialed in. Um, when you sort of think about the tournament environment, um, what do you think plays there? Is that the approach that you would take? Um, I think what they're trying to do is find a happy middle ground between what the vanilla D2 felt like and what it feels like now. And that's what they were doing in 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 Destiny 1 too. It, I respect it because they want to they want a game that plays fast-paced that relies heavily on player skill without, without gimmicks almost. And it's tough to use that word to, dis- to, to describe some of the things that are, are banned because destiny at its core is a game that has is it's a shooter, but it's mostly it's, a, there's a lot of gimmicky stuff to counter gimmicky stuff, right? I mean, you have a, you have people shooting magical bow and arrows that that tether you and you all take damage together and people throwing explosive you know void bombs that blow each other up and you know fire swords and fire hammers and fire bullets and and a lot, a lot, of, fire. A lot of fire and lot of fire you see what I'm saying it's like you, you don't want to strip too much away because when you strip too much away it's just not destiny anymore it's you're trying to make it halo with, with, you know, some with supers almost you're trying to make it halo with supers because 
people are going to run the same loadout, right? Everybody's going to say, okay, you know, if this, this, and this isn't allowed, I'm just going to run, you know, my, my not forgotten and, or, or ace of spades or whatever. People are going to find a, a, a certain setup and then eventually it turns maybe too much into Halo. That being said, I am not a professional by any means. I do play one on Twitch, but uh, as far as like competitive, whatever, whatever you want to call it, you know, the guys that are, that are, are trying really hard to make destiny as competitive as possible. I, maybe I once was because that's what I, I wanted. Like you said before, my career has taken a different path. Um, so maybe before I wanted to be the guy that was like, yeah, I, I'm involved in all this stuff. And, and granted, I wasn't, I wasn't good enough to keep up with the best of them, but I tried. And, and so I had the experience and and the knowledge of how to play the game and what why certain choices were made, but I also see it from the other side where people are like, well, why you know why can't I use my perfect rolled edge transit that isn't as good <laughs> as a wet towel still, but it's my edge transit. Why can't I use that in competitive? Because you know maybe one of the three shots I get might do some damage to somebody. I'm making jokes about edge transit in the middle of this, by the way. Um, man, that gun is trash. It's, but it's, I see what they're doing and I understand it. And hopefully the, the, the style of play that results from it is the most optimized version that can be seen in a competitive light without taking away the feel of destiny. I think they could do it. I feel like nowadays, uh, and I'm not in the same position as you, but it, it's easier after going through all of that in D2's launch to be like, yeah, that's not for me. I'm going to enjoy the fun, funner side of Destiny uh, where I can use the the weird, stupid stuff and, and win fast. The weird, stupid stuff is what makes Destiny, Destiny sometimes, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Lupo, you mentioned it a couple times, but, uh, you know, since the last time you're on this show, you're your career really has changed. And I know that a lot of our listeners have been following you since episode 34 or even before that. And a lot of those people, you know, are like on Twitch trying to do it themselves. Like how you've been handling it. What's, what's been going on and, and how are you, uh, you know, how are you, how are you living with your new kind of your new place in life? (laughs) We have to ask. Um, so for those that were not, that are not aware I started playing a game called Fortnite <laughs> and a couple um, people play what it. What is this game? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we, we talked about this actually last time I was around. Although like you said before, that one might not have seen the light of day. Cough, cough. Um, but it's uh, the game is. Man, Call of Duty is going to be my example for this. Call of Duty did this thing <laughs> that that I had not seen any other game kind of do, and that was penet- penetrating to the mainstream um, in a way that that few things ever will from gaming. I remember seeing a Halo uh, trailer uh, before a movie in theaters, and I was like, oh, I know that game. That's cool. And then it didn't really happen for a while, but Call of Duty has always been like the popular kid. Uh, you know, like he's like the kind of like the quarterback in high school that, you know, everybody kind of, everybody knows Call of Duty, right? You know, you have some, some, uh, some musicians and stuff and, you know, whoever they talk about Call of Duty on social media. This is, we're talking a couple of years ago and then Fortnite shows up and there's no kills. There's no blood. There's silly stuff that's colorful and, and you, there's all sorts of ridiculous skins and, and you can make yourself look like a surfer or a spaceman or, or a freaking Venus flytrap with legs. It, it, there's ridiculousness. It's shenanigans. And it captured people. And I happened to get lucky enough to tag along on that ride with a bunch of my friends. Um, and I am the I I look at myself and I'm the luckiest person on the entire planet. Not because uh, of of all the stuff that happened with Fortnite, where my stream is gone. I consider myself lucky right now because I have a three-year-old to keep me grounded because man, I've seen what it looks like for some people to lose track of life. And um, now before anybody out there is like, Oh, I know who he's talking about. No, 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 no. Back up. I'm talking about in general. I'm not saying anybody in particular. I, I've, you know, I've seen musicians and, and artists and, you know, 
everybody. There's all walks of life have lost it's, track. It's of not them. a new type of song. It's yeah. a very human thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so I've seen that and I'm trying really, really hard to not have that happen to myself. And man, my son does a really good job uh, of, of reminding me of what life actually is. We're going through potty training right now. That boy. <laughs> this sounds messy. <laughs> that boy does not care how badly he has to pee if he's in the middle of playing trains. Daddy, I do not have to go potty. 15 seconds later, and this is a real story because it happened three days ago. 15 <laughs> seconds later, literally a puddle on the floor underneath his feet. I'm like, dude, I just asked you. And he looks at me and he goes, he goes, Daddy, I pottied. I was like, yeah, I just asked you if you had to potty, dude. And he's like, Daddy, I, I, I pottied, my, my pants are wet. And I was like, yeah, okay, I, yeah, I'll strip you down and go to the bathroom. And I'll clean you up and I'll clean the floor up. Um, it's, it has been a ride and we're not done yet. He just, I believe yesterday or the day before, I think it's yesterday, he pooped in the potty for the first time. Uh, <gasps> Congratulations. Boom. Peeing was a big day. This is this is different because he he like the first time he peed in the potty, he was like, Yeah, I went pee, and we were all super excited. And then he was con- per- relatively consistently saying, Mommy, I have to pee. Or like, or he would say, Mommy, I- I'm peeing, but he's not actually because you know he doesn't understand the tense difference yet. <laughs> but and, and so Samantha <laughs> would be like, Oh God, let's run to the toilet and like run him over there, and then he'd pee in the toilet. And you know, it was, it was a celebration every time, and it still is, but he would always just just let number two rip right into his undies. And now, now things are changing, hopefully. And so if we're on the verge of having a potty trained three-year-old, man, the level of stress is about to, to just drop. And I'm super excited. But this kind of stuff, this this storytelling even of my this son stuff, this this bat dude bathroom stuff is like the most important stuff, dude. Because <laughs> when, when you're a kid, you don't have to change diapers and they're not going to soil themselves anymore. Suddenly you're so free. You're like, hey, bud, do you have to go to the bathroom? And they're like, nope. And I'm like, sweet. We don't have to do anything different. We can keep playing. Amazing. <laughs> it's it is. And every parent that listens to this is like, is, they're all nodding their head right now with a smile on their face. Maybe they laughed once or twice. It's like, yep, he's right. Yep, yep. Because, man, that that it's such a big thing. But the fact that I can, I can even talk to you guys about this makes me happy. Because if it weren't for, that, for this, weren't for, st- weren't for stuff like him, you know, having these, these basically life-changing events going on and, and I, I would be afraid of, of if I would lose track of who I am. I don't yeah. think it would happen, but you never know, you know? I remember the last time we talked on the show, um, you had described yourself, you were recounting going, uh, seeing someone out in the world and, and describing yourself uh, when they asked what your job was as in entertainment. And that response stuck with me because um, that is a good way to describe it. Um, but also, I think you're doing it in a way where there's not really a, a mold yet, right? Like nobody knows what the the streamer nine to five looks like if you're going to really push and be successful. There's lots of examples of people who have done it. Um, but is, you know, it seems like a lot of the times it just it just sort of works for them. You know, it's it's hard to replicate. Um, I guess I, I could see the value in having something that keeps you grounded when there's, you know, there's literally no hours where you know, you're, you're off potentially not on the clock. <laughs> um, I guess, I mean, how do you, how have you carved out, uh, how have you defined a, a career that you're working at that is, that is, I mean, it's pushing, it's grinding. I mean, you are, you are trying to take this thing, but still have some boundaries to make sure that there's space for, for pooping. <laughs> <laughs> there's always space for pooping, my friend. You'll make space. Um, Scheduling for my wife and I is like the key to the streaming castle. Uh, I, I I live my life on a very rigid schedule right now. I get up at seven, uh, ha, you know, shower, have breakfast. Uh, I lift in the morning, uh, some mornings, take Charlie to daycare some mornings. Um, and those kind of like, you know, they rotate around each other depending on what day of the week it is. Um, Wednesday, I have off all day. And then Sunday during the day, 
Plus each day there's like a gap between 4 and 8 p.m. where 4, 4 to 8 p.m. Central where I I don't stream. But from 4 till usually about 5.30, that window can potentially have like phone calls, um, interviews, email, uh, podcast stuff. Unless uh, I have a couple buddies that I'm very good friends with that I'll make my schedule work for them depending on <clears throat> who they are. They um, sound handsome. They yeah. they are very actually handsome. I don't like them. Fuck those guys. Yeah, <laughs> fuck those. Think they're yeah, competing they're with worst. us. <laughs> uh, don't uh, don't worry. I'll never go on their podcast again. You guys only. Okay, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Here's a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez, but but the schedule is is one of the biggest pieces of my of whatever it is that I'm doing, and the thing is that schedule still is like. It's rigid and it's, it's a lot. I grin and I've been sleeping in a little bit the last couple, probably last couple weeks, to be honest with you, because I'm staying up later and later every night for stuff like podcasts. Uh, <clears throat> um, <laughs> but, but it's th- things just shift around. You know, you do what you do, what you need to do. But typically I stream an average of like most days is 11 hours a day. And then on Sundays, it's another three hours. So I, I'm putting up a lot of time, put up a lot of time, uh, a big portion of, uh, of my life right now, about 60 hours a week is streaming plus another probably 10 to 20 of like non stream, non live, but stream related stuff, YouTube, uh, podcasts, well, like it, all sorts your of own thing. small business at this uh, point. It's like yeah. very, sm- not small, but, uh, it, <laughs> You're a very self-contained type of, uh, you're not, yeah. there's, there's not many employees. Well, that, that was once the case. Um, but it was just me. And then it became me and Samantha ha- started to help by becoming my manager. Um, and now one of my moderators is my YouTube guy. So I have that. And then I also have, uh, now since I'm part of Rogue and their parent company, Re- uh, Rec Global, I also have all those guys, which includes like Steve Aoki and Imagine Dragons. They, they, I'm like having conversations going on with, their podcast. Is that them? They, <laughs> no, just cool, trust I'm me. Cool. They they don't have time for a podcast, my friend. Uh, that'd be actually be pretty cool, though. Maybe I'll hit them up about that. Maybe they should do one about uh, PvP and Destiny. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's kind of saturated space. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a niche topic. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. exactly. Exactly. Uh, I mean, there's, I have all those people. And then I I also, I have uh, a management, like an agency uh, loaded, the same people that manage like Tyler and and Tim and Lyric and Shroud. And so like all, you know, the, the names on Twitch, I guess, which it is such a weird thing for me to pull myself in with, with people like that, because man, we've been watching like Lyric for what feels it's dude, it's legitimately, it's, we're coming up on a decade probably literally 10 years. Hmm. Can you believe that? That's mind blowing. Let, let me ask. I mean, 10 years from now, do you see yourself still streaming? Um, 10 years from now, I, I, I hope to be retired. 10 years from now, I, yeah. I hope to be retired. And the funny thing is, <laughs> and you're going to, you're going to laugh at me and, and you know, people listen to probably be like, Oh, Lupo. But you know what I'm going to do when I retire? Pro- video games probably just play video games all day. And you know what? I might as well just stream it. So, <laughs> so realistically, if, if you cut uh, if you cut away the business side, like the 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 casting Fortnite events and the sponsorships requirements and and the the esports organization, if you cut away all that stuff, I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like I retired on my 30th birthday. I feel I feel like I already did. There's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. I have to be very dedicated to it to keep things running. And I I continue to do it because I know that there are people that watch my stream that listen to me on on podcasts and and on and I've been on the radio and TV. It's so weird to say all this stuff, dude. It feels it feels weird. It feels like like part of this is like is the I have an existential crisis with it where I'm like. I'm just a dude that plays video games, but, but tomorrow I'm going to, to a place in Omaha called Nebraska Furniture Mart. 
that's like a big, it's like a big electronics and furniture store. And I'm literally making an appearance. I, dude, it's so <laughs> weird. You're and like gonna, grave digger. It's, dude, it's so weird. And I, Sunday, Sunday, but, Sunday, Luke. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. The ticket price is for the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's weird because, because I would never in a million years have imagined that I would be in this place. But I'm gonna go sign stuff for for people that come, and I'm gonna play Fortnite with people, and we're gonna hang out for a couple hours, and then after that, I'm going to a three year old's birthday party, and that's not even a joke. That's my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lupa, we very much appreciate your friendship, I, and dude. Of course, you guys have, have have been around since the the beginning. Granted, your subs yeah. might not have uh, been consistent the entire time. <laughs> cough, cough. Sweat. I'm just kidding, dude. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, it's. it's I, I love you guys. I do. Every time we get to hang out in person, whether it's five seconds or, or I wish it was a million years, you all are great, and I love your show. And I'm sorry. I'm. I'm sorry that I that I bit, I t- I stepped away from Destiny when it, it just wasn't was wasn't fun to stream, man. It just wasn't, dude. <laughs> We don't blame you for <laughs> not wanting to get screamed at for we trying to play a video game. Wow, Lupo, we, this game's trash. What are you doing? <laughs> we had to bring it together every week for an hour for, for yeah. those months. So, All right, boys. Yeah. Anybody play Destiny this week? I saw. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> what can we talk about? So it turns out, welcome to Crucible Radio. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about how if you hold this, the left stick forward, you still move forward. Thoughts? <laughs> yeah, it still happens. Sick. Thanks for the episode. We hope you enjoyed listening. Make sure you subscribe. Bye. That's a funny thing, though, because now that the meta is the same as it was in Destiny 1, we can just rerun old episodes Dude. from Destiny 1. Same same <laughs> concepts. Don't don't push shotgunners. We're good. Just like so, dub over. I was literally going to say yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all right. I expect within the next, like the next couple episodes, you got to, dude, whoever does the audio for this has to sneak in clips from old episodes just to see if they can make them work. Just the same. I would, you know, the strongest pulse right now is hopscotch, but go figure. (laughs) Uh, Lupa, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people find you if they've been living under a rock? With the exception of Twitter, just go to Google, search for Dr. Lupo, dude. The, getting that Twitter handle, I got, a, <laughs> I got an off, uh, off, an, an off record story for you, gentlemen. But Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, it's all just Dr. Lupo now, dude. It's all just Dr. Lupo. But if you're on Twitter, it's Dr. Lupo on Twitch. I know everyone's brain is like, wow, that's really stupid. I know, dude. Just trust me. I know. Yeah, Dr. Lupo followed me on Twitter when he was called The Trials Train, Boom, so no big deal. Account name, which I, I still own that account because otherwise squatters take it. <laughs> you bastards. Oh, thanks for coming on, dude. Yeah, of course, gentlemen. I appreciate you. We love you. Pretty good, pretty good, that pretty, Lupo. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good Lupo. I, you know, here's the thing about Lupo. He's a pretty Lupo. Is uh, Lupo is a consummate professional. He's very good at video games. He's funny, he's entertaining, but the thing that, like, I just can't get over is that he's, he's just, like, a kind person. He's just, like, a nice person. I don't know. I, Lupo, this is not for you. I, I take it back. You're probably listening to this right now. This is probably, probably tickling you pink. Uh, no, he, he's, he's, he's just honestly, uh, he's one of the good ones, folks. They, they, there's, there's so few good ones in this world to hang on to. He's one of the good ones. Go check him out. And uh, hey, go check out Crucible Radio. This is a really good podcast. <laughs> yeah, I so, love it. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, if you want to learn more about anything that is player versus player in this. We cover it all. And hey, go to crucibleradio.com. We got a, you know, we got some fun stuff there. We got some fun merch. You can listen to all the episodes. You can watch the video version of the podcast. And hey, if you're trying to actually get better at this game, uh, why don't you look at a map? Why don't you learn some call outs, buddy? The one and only relic, our, our in-house cartographer. Nothing else like it. Uh, you can find them all at crucibleradio.com.
that's it, guys. Bye. Bye. See you. Hello everyone, Swain here. You know that Crucible Radio is your source for all things Destiny PvP, and I know you want more than just this video, so make sure to head on over to crucibleradio.com to find all of our past episodes, detailed Crucible maps, t-shirts, and much, much more.